Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Journey Latin America's Virtual Travel Club. Today, we're heading to Colombia, one of South America's most diverse and vibrant countries. Giving the talk today is our top travel expert, Lena Fuller, who comes from Colombia, was born in the coffee region, but spent most of her life living in Medellin. Joining us for our Q&A is Mary Nelson, one of our other top travel experts. You may remember Mary gave the talk on Argentina and Chile at the beginning of the series. Uh, Mary, although from Chile, spent many years growing up in, in Cali, the salsa capital of Colombia. And I'm also delighted to welcome Lena Bartelt, our local guide who is joining us live from Santa Marta on Colombia's Caribbean coast. So without further ado, I'd like to hand you over to Lena. So by Colombia, uh, it has a variety of things, cities, um, wildlife, adventure, countryside, beautiful and colorful towns, and it has loads of carnivals. But the most beautiful thing is the friendly people, the smiles that you see in the country. Um, it has the, it's one of the few countries as well that has a coast to the Caribbean and to the Pacific coast. And it has a beautiful rainforest as well, and the flat lands of Los Llanos. So it has a little bit of everything. I want to mention here, and I know that Colombia brings um, uh, the past. Um, Colombia had a, a recent civil, uh, civil war. And, and definitely something that I want to mention is that the Colombia peace process was signed in 2012. And for example, uh, the ex-president Juan Manuel Santos won the Nobel Prize in 2016. For the last 30 years, um, Colombia has, uh, has had a transformation, a transformation for good. So it is time now to discover a country that perhaps at one point was closed to travelers, now is fully open and is, is ready to receive a tourist. And, and definitely it is the time to visit. So I want to mention five facts about Colombia that everyone loves. Uh, the first one is um, you will find that 10% of the world species of flora or fauna are in Colombia. You can see, well, in some places, you could see the jaguar. So it has a, the worst, um, the most diverse um, um, amount of bird species, uh, about 1920, and, and we're still counting, 1920 type of birds is quite impressive. Uh, it's one of the few countries that has a big, huge mountain range right next to the sea. So the highest mountain of Colombia is only 42 kilometers from the sea. That's quite impressive, really. Um, and it has the rainiest area uh, in the world. I was reading today that it's the third rainiest area uh, in the world, being Quito, the capital, the, the wettest city in the world, which is the Pacific coast. So I know that we know about rain here in the UK, but why to go there to see the beautiful jungle that the rain creates in these countries. And as well, it has one of the most colorful rivers in the world as well, Caño Cristales. Um, it, is a, it is a spectacular river that between um, May and November just changes color. Um, it's red, orange, it's yellow. It's, it's an amazing and beautiful river. So let's talk about uh, the cities. Bogota is the capital, and Bogota is a, is a great city. It has the colonial part of called La Candelaria. So it has a contrast between modern and colonial. So you can, you, you may decide to stay in the colonial part and leave um, how, the, um, how the Spanish, um, to see how the Spanish created this, this beautiful colonial city. Um, you can uh, you have the, the the hill of Monserrate where you have the most amazing views. Um, you have a lot of graffiti. You can explore the, the city, especially the colonial part on foot or by bike, which is quite um, an interesting way to, to see. But for me, perhaps um, the countryside around Bogota is the, the best part uh, that the city has. Something that you should never miss is the gold museum. The Gold Museum is a spectacular, I have to say. And I have visited a lot of museums around the world. But uh, 
but definitely that is uh, something that nobody should miss uh, when visiting the country. Um, uh, in here, this is a, a lagoon called Guatavita. Uh, Guatavita, it, it says that it was um, where the legend of El Dorado was born when the Spanish arrived at the continent. Um, this is a piece of gold where the, the chief of the Muisca used to go to this lagoon, to the center of the lagoon, covering gold, and he used to swim or, or to, to, to swim and, and get rid of the gold in the lake. That creates the legend, and that's the reason why the Spanish wanted the gold when they arrived to, to the continent. So, um, so yeah, that, that's it. Um, you will learn about, about all the, the, the history and the cultures in the country. Um, as well, uh, Colombia is a, is a Catholic country, and, but one of the most impressive uh, places close to Bogota is the Sol Cathedral of Sipapira. It is an impressive um, architectural um, um, or engineering, sorry, engineering um, gem, basically. It's about 200 meters on the ground and is incredible it's fantastic that if, if you don't believe in religion just go for the architecture just go for the place um the, the way they build it is incredible it should not be missed at all. Um, and another city if you don't want to to start in high altitude you can start in Medellin, as i said the city of eternal spring um, one of the things that, um, that brings Medellin to mind is the transformation that the city had in the last 30 years. As I mentioned, um, the, city, the city was transformed because of, um, it has a, the, the governments in the last 30 years, they opened the, the poor neighborhoods that were living up in the mountains. Um, they, they bring them down to the city in this, um, in, they build the metro, they build the tram, they build this cable car. They kind of put together the whole city and they open everything. So people who perhaps were living before in these neighborhoods um, and, and couldn't go to work or, or couldn't have access to, to health, to libraries, to museums, to parks, to anything, uh, they, with this, they managed to get it. For um, 50, cent, uh, 50 um, cents, they, they can travel from north to south um, and, and just cover the whole city. It's, it's really incredible. And here you don't see that much of the city itself uh, in terms of tourists. You see it, the transformation of how a city can become one of the most innovative cities in the world. Um, so, so I invite you to visit Medellin. Medellin has as well beautiful countryside. It's not just a city. So one of the most important things of Medellin is flowers. So you have the festival flower, um, the flower festival, sorry, um, in, the, in the month of August. And you can visit the, the town of Santa Elena, just about uh, 10, 15 minutes away from the city. And here you see how, they, how these uh, people build all these, uh, it's called silletas which is covered in flowers and, and it's, a, it's a beautiful uh, thing to, to watch how they, how they produce these beautiful flowers. You have the beautiful town of Guatape and, uh, and the, the Peñol el Hill or, or the lake uh, nearby. The countryside there is great uh, for walking and it's beautiful as well. And the other city, the other main city as well that is well known in Colombia, is Cali. Cali is perhaps it's the sea level, so it's quite hot. So if you want to start visiting the country in the southern part, this is the place to arrive. Um, Iberia flies to Cali. Um, and definitely this is a, a beautiful place to start exploring the archaeological site of San Agustin or the coffee region as well. Cali is well known for salsa. If you want to learn salsa and don't want to go to Cuba, Cali is the other place to go. So, but okay, so let's rem remember Guatavita, the legend of El Dorado, gold, the Spanish, all these brings um, a lot of beautiful colonial towns to Colombia. Um, something that you should never miss is to do the colonial trail, uh, basically, 
north of Bogotá, you have the town of Villa de Leyva, you have the Barichara, you have the beautiful city of Mompos, um, and so on. The Spanish built all these places to go from, uh, from town to town in order to arrive to the coast and send all the gold to Spain. So the towns are very well preserved and they are a beauty to, to visit. Villa de Leyva is the closest to Bogotá, about three hours away from Bogotá. I recommend a couple of nights to spend here because it's a lot to do, it's a lot to see, and it's a beautiful town. It has a lot of festivals, the kite festival, the jazz festival, and as well, uh, you see music and everything when you are there. Barichara, Guane, San Gil, continue from Villa de Leyva, north. Uh, here you can see the real, um, in the real path, the real Camino. Uh, this is the, the real, um, or, or when the Spanish used to travel from town to town at that time, you, you covered that Camino. So, so these beautiful towns are very well preserved. Monpos is a town in the Magdalena River. So it's surrounded by water. So um, this is the town, or more or less, that inspired Garcia Marquez to write uh, the times, uh, the love, love in times of cholera. I recommend to read that book. It's beautiful and it will take you to the town of Monpos. Another town in the far south, uh, very famous is Popayan. Popayan is very famous for the Easter celebrations. So if you, if you want to go uh, and see all these uh, incredible processions uh, go there in Easter. Otherwise, it's well known as the white city of Colombia. Very close to Popayán is Silvia Market. Silvia Market is only on Tuesdays. So we have to make sure that it falls on the right day. But this is the closest that you can see or that you can remember how the Ecuadorian markets are. So it's, it's very similar in a way. Um, now let me take you to the archaeological sites, um, the archaeological sites of Colombia. So we have, Colombia doesn't have big archaeological sculptures like Peru, it has the Incas, or Mexico that has the Aztecs or the Mayas or so on. Colombia had a lot of different um, cultures. Um, I believe it's about, at the moment, it's about 38 different indigenous groups in Colombia. Eh, sorry, 83, not 38. So as you can imagine, everyone had their own culture, their own dress, their own, their own thing. So, and they did not have a, a writing language. So sometimes uh, things have got lost uh, with time. So for example, we have the lost city. The lost city is located in Santa Marta, in the Sierra Nevada. Um, the place that I told you, it had the big, big, uh, the big mountains right next to the sea. That's where the, the Sierra Nevada is. So um, here um, is a trek to get there. It's about five days, um, three days to get there, one day there, and then three days back. The only downside is that it doesn't have good accommodation. So. Uh, we sadly we won't be able to send our clients to this uh, amazing place because it's very difficult to get there. But there are companies in Colombia who does it so for the adventurous one, and I mean adventurous proper one. Uh, this is the place perhaps to go. Then you have San Agustin. San Agustin um, is as well a mystery. So every every site in Colombia is a mystery. Um, you have a a lot of statues um, that nobody, again, nobody knows what happened because uh, this site was, um, was um, abandoned before the Spanish arrived. Um, so, but it is uh, dated from the first to the eighth century BC. So, so it's quite an old uh, culture, uh, antique uh, um, site. And you have about 600 statues, different statues that are well known in the city. This is a, a, an incredible place to explore because the statues are in different areas. So you spend the whole day just doing walking in the countryside 
and getting to see the statues. So, so that is beautiful as well. The town of San Agustin is quite an incredible place. It's very laid back, it's very Colombia. It's surrounded by beautiful nature. So if you want uh, the real, the, the rural Colombia, um, this is the place to go. Um, and this is another site, Tierra Dentro, where you have incredible underground tombs, uh, beautiful painted. Uh, you should not be, if you are claustrophobic, I, I recommend not to enter. Um, but again, it's another mystery because we don't know much about it. It's no, it's no written language, it's no um, culture that was passed between generations. It's, it's no, um, we don't know much. What we can do is guess, basically. And you will be, uh, you probably will have your own theories when you go there. But now, okay, let, let's go to a more famous region, the coffee region. So the coffee region is right in the center, in the center of Colombia, a small triangle. So here you have three departments that forms the region. Quindío being the lowest uh, ground and Caldas being the highest ground. So you have the, the snow mountain peaks uh, around Caldas, around Manizales here. Uh, Parque um, de los, uh, los Nevados National Park, that is the place. And um, something that you should never miss is to ask for un tinto. Tinto in Colombia is a small coffee. So wherever you go, somebody is going to offer you a tinto. Uh, never say no, so <laughs> it's delicious. Um, so, okay, so it's all about coffee. And um, coffee region is, you learn all the process, you get all the, uh, you, you now can try all, all the different uh, gourmet um, varieties. Um, you stay in a coffee plantation. The coffee plantations are beautiful. Um, and you can ride in all those uh, jeeps, the wheelies, uh, which in Colombia they call jeepao. It carried such an amount of, of coffee. You can still see these type of jeeps in the countryside. But here is an option for you to travel in the countryside and go by road. It's, it's beautiful. You can do horse riding and you can visit the colorful towns of uh, Salento or Finlandia is quite a few uh, beautiful places in the country. But I think that the most beautiful part of the coffee region is the countryside. Definitely, it has the beautiful variety of orchids, butterflies, birds. It's, it's incredible, it's absolutely stunning. Um, this region we recommend for self-drive if you want to explore the place, the roads are paved, are perfect. Um, you have a short distances, it's great for families. So definitely this is an area to do self-drive. Just, um, just ask her and, and that will be the, the place I recommend to do it. Um, as well, uh, you have um, the wildlife areas. So you have, a, for example, three main areas. You have the Amazon, right there, here at the bottom. You have the Pacific Coast, and you have Los Llanos. So let me explain about this one. The Pacific Coast, this is the area that I mentioned that is the rainiest area in the world. It has the most pristine rainforest uh, that you can find, and it's completely isolated. To get to this place, Nuki, and another place called Vallasolano, you have to fly. It's the only way to get there. And here is the place where you see thousands or hundreds of humpback whales arriving. They arrive between May and November. The best months are July to September, or even October. It is an incredible place to visit. And a pristine rainforest, and as well, you have the Embera indigenous in the area. So you have a combination of a wild, beautiful, and very long sandy beaches. So go there, that's a beautiful place. On the opposite side, on the border to Venezuela, you have Los Llanos. Los Llanos is cowpo area in Colombia, basically. It's where they grow all the cattle. And you stay in their houses, um, which is called Atos, 
And here, what you do is a Colombian safari. This, instead of a, a proper safari jeep like in Africa, you have these um, safari tracks, basically. Um, and then you go by river as well. What do you see here? You see anteaters, you have the capybara. Capybara is incredible. And you have the huge anaconda snake. Uh, don't worry, you're not going to find it in your room. Uh, you're going to find it somewhere along this river. And then you have Leticia. Leticia is in the Amazon. Leticia in Colombia has borders with Brazil and with, uh, and with Peru. So it is a, you have to fly again from, from Bogota. It's a direct flight from Bogota. And here you have all the experience of the proper Amazon uh, jungle. You have a strips by boat. You go to the rainforest. You see the indigenous communities in the area. You see the dolphins, the caiman, and the beautiful sunsets um, of the Amazon. This is a, a, a beautiful place if you want to see wildlife as well. So now let's change. Let's go to the, uh, the Caribbean coast. So the Caribbean coast, um, what do we have here? We have the city of Cartagena and the Rosario Islands. You have Tairona National Park that Lena was talking earlier about that. And she is here. from this beautiful city. You have the, the beautiful uh, beaches of Palomino, uh, but then you have a little bit far towards the east, Providencia and San Andres. Uh, remember Gabo, Gabriel Garcia Marquez, again, the Colombian writer, uh, he based all his books in this region. And here we have carnivals. The Carnaval de Barranquilla is the most famous one. And it's at the same time as the Carnaval in Rio. So February is the time to dance in Barranquilla. So Sierra Nevada de Santa Marta. We go back to, to the Sierra Nevada, to Ciudad Perdida, to, to, the, to the Bolivar Peak and everything. Here you have a combination of beach, the beautiful town of Santa Marta, and you have the town of Minca. Minca is a beautiful town when you have incredible waterfalls, incredible landscape, beautiful people. And, and then you have, a, it's a great place for bird watching. So, so definitely this is just an hour away from the city, an hour away from the coast, and you have a beautiful nature nearby. But I think that's somebody that everyone wants to see the Tayona National Park, beautiful beaches right next to the rainforest, wild, great, the um, incredible uh, beach, really. Here you, you have a little bit of Ciudad Perdida close to Tairona. You have the town of Pueblito. Pueblito, it takes about an hour, hour and a half, perhaps, if I'm not wrong, um, just walking um, to get to see it. But uh, it's an incredible place as well. If you want to see a little bit of the Tairona culture, um, you will see the, this little town. The beaches, the, the, there are great, huge currents here in Tairona. So you have to go to a specified areas where you can swim. You cannot swim everywhere. So that's the only thing. But it's a great place for walking in very long, beautiful beaches. A little bit far towards Venezuela, towards the, the east side, you have Buritaca and Palomino. Buritaca and Palomino are very wild beaches. Here you don't find big resorts. Here you find uh, eco-friendly hotels only. Um, everything is about nature here. Everything is about work. Don't expect uh, big swimming pools. Don't expect air conditioning. Don't expect hot water sometimes. Um, but you have the peaceful, beautiful land of Colombia. And again, the beautiful smile of the, the corgis, the, um, the Arhuacos and the Tairona, the descendants of the Taironas who live in the area. Cartagena. Cartagena, for me, is the most beautiful city in Colombia. Basically, you have, uh, it is very well preserved, the colonial part. You have the walled city of Cartagena, the, the, but then you have as well the modern part of Cartagena. So you have a little bit of, of both. Um, in the same city. I have to recognize that I always stay within the whole city every time that I visit. 
Um, but definitely that is a, a place to spend a few days for sure. Um, Cartagena, you have a, a lot of history uh, with the, the Spanish that built the Castillo de San Felipe. Um, it has these beautiful houses. It has a lot of, a, um, a, it was a, basically a fort uh, during the, call, the, the Spanish conquistadors uh, trying to preserve um, all the gold that they were sending to Spain. Uh, what do you see in Cartagena? In Cartagena, you see these beautiful ladies dressed um, with all these colorful clothes and everything and, and selling a variety of fruits uh, that you find in Colombia. And everywhere, in the, every park in the evenings, you have uh, people dancing, playing music. It has a really nice vibe and really nice salsa place as well. So it's another place to dance. Uh, but the beach in Cartagena, Cartagena itself, the city, is not fantastic. So an hour away by boat, you go to the Rosario Islands, and there you have the paradise beach that you want to, that you imagine in the Caribbean coast. It's an archipelago, so it doesn't have long beaches like the ones in Tairona, but you have the beautiful sea, and it's great for snorkeling or diving. And finally, you have the beach of San Andres and Providencia, that definitely that is a that is a great great place to to visit. It's a little bit far from Colombia, so it's perhaps closer to Nicaragua. We say so. It's a flight. This is very good to combine with Panama. So you fly, for example, from Cartagena to San Andres, and then from San Andres to Panama, and then return from there. So so definitely that's a good combination. Providencia is a, is a smaller. Um, and it's, it's just a little bit rough here, but definitely that is the, the place. So let's see. I just want to try something before I finish. I just want to say, of course, have I mentioned that the best part of Colombia is the people? I don't think so, but <laughs> definitely everyone will love the country and everyone will love the people. Colombians are fantastic always smiling, always dancing, always happy. They always, they will welcome you for sure. And before I finish, let me see. I just want to see if I can show you the video.
and that was really amazing. Thank you so much. Um, I went to Colombia, I think it was about two or three years ago for the first time. And uh, I, it, you just brought back so many wonderful memories. And I can now clearly see that I have to go back because there's so much more to discover. Those beach shots were incredible. Providencia and the Rosario Islands looked amazing. Um, and certainly the coffee region certainly looks like somewhere I could spend quite a lot of time. I absolutely adore coffee. Um, so I just want to, if it's OK, we'll wrap up with a few of the questions. We, we answered a couple of them at the beginning of the, of the night. Um, we had, a, we had a, a question on mobility. Um, somebody would like be to would be travelling to Colombia with a friend uh, who's wheelchair bound and how accessible. Perhaps, Lena, you might be able to help us with this. Um, how easy is it to travel around Colombia, visit the sites um, if you're, you're um, restricted to a wheelchair? Sure. Um, well, I'd say that Colombia is um, pretty wheel wheelchair friendly, that within the cities and especially also hotels and every sort of touristic infrastructure, you will not encounter any problems. Obviously, if you go into nature and you, you will be on dirt roads and stuff, so that might complicate it a little, but within the cities and in the hotels, etc., no problem at all. Great, fantastic. Thank you, Lena. Um, we're being asked about um, cacao plantations. Uh, Lena or Lena, do you have um, any suggestions of where you might be able to visit any cacao plantations? Um, I can answer that. I, I oh, know. Go for it, Lena. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know that many of the, well, uh, of cacao plantations, but I, I went to a hotel, a beautiful hotel in the coffee region. Um, it's called Hacienda Bambusa. And in the, in the premises of the hotel, they have this beautiful cacao plantation that, they, that you can visit and you can try the, the great chocolate um, that they produce and everything and see all the transformation of how they, they do uh, from the plant to the, um, to the uh, I don't know, to the chocolate itself. Maybe, so maybe it I don't know about the kind of them. <laughs> Yeah, maybe I can add something. So there is definitely plenty of coffee, uh, sorry, um, cacao plantations in the coffee region, but you also find them all over the country. So you could, um, you can visit cacao plantations in Santander, for example, north of Bogota, close to Marichara. You can find them in the Sierra Nevada, Santa Marta. Even in Los Llanos, I visited a tiny little farmer's place where they cultivated their cacao and um, processed it and everything. So very artisanal um, chocolate production. But yeah, like if you are interested in that, I guess in almost every place in Colombia, you can find a coffee plantation. A cacao, cacao plantation. plantation. Cacao plantation. <laughs> yes. <laughs> coffee and chocolate. It's a, it's a great combination. Yeah. Uh, a quick question. Uh, it's all, it is. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> Sorry, Lena, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Go ahead. No, it was just, as you said, coffee and chocolate. So um, I guess um, the climate for them to, to grow well is kind of similar, um, which is why you almost always find cacao plantations where, where there is coffee as well. Fantastic. Uh, quick question on yellow fever vaccination. Uh, are we required to show a yellow fever uh, certificate uh, on arrival in Colombia? I can answer that. Go ahead, Lina. No, no on arrival to Colombia. Um, but if you are going to the Amazon rainforest, you will, uh, you will be asked to present the yellow fever certificate. That is perhaps the only area in Colombia where you were required to present. That's great. That, that's really helpful. And, and perhaps, Lena, as you're based in Colombia, you might be able to give us an insight into what the situation is regarding COVID right now. What, um, uh, how, how's the vaccination uh, program in Colombia going? And, you know, is, uh, is the country pretty much functioning as normal? Or are you, I, I imagine you must have restrictions and local lockdowns. Perhaps you can tell us a little bit about what, what's happening now. Yeah, sure. And um, so the third wave of coronavirus, unfortunately, has hit us as well. And um, so at the moment, the restrictions are a bit stricter. There are um, a couple of local lockdowns and some curfews at night. But, um, and vaccinations are 
um, ongoing. Obviously, we we are at like 10% of the population at the moment who've been vaccinated already. And um, and what was I about to say? Ah, but yeah, but Colombia is currently doing everything possible to keep the tourist the tourist infrastructure going. So hotels, um, sites, transportation, flights, everything is operating as normal as far as possible, let's say. So moving around and visiting places and enjoying the beach, etc., is no problem. What you what you have to keep in mind is that um, wearing face masks is re is required everywhere, and and also in terms of all those um, all the protocols, um, it's super safe wherever you go. People stick to the protocols, so there is no need to worry. That's really helpful, Emma. Thank you very much. Actually, we've been asked about the safety issues in Colombia, um, and perhaps I might bring Mary in now because uh, I've just realised that she's uh, she's there, but she's remaining a little quiet. So, Mary, can you tell us about the safety aspect about travelling in Colombia? You do have to be. It's, it's basically common sense. The majority of areas that we're going to send you to are absolutely fine. They're safe to walk around. Um, there are areas where you we won't send you and it's better if you don't go but you're not going to find any of the of these ideas we have in in, in mind as in you know pickpockets in every corner it's going to happen as it happens in every country um but so far as long as you have common sense it will be fine um stick to the areas that we're gonna you know that you, you're gonna go the tourist areas um and yeah you shouldn't have an issue that's great thank you mary yeah. I would like to, to add to that, but I mentioned on the presentation about the transformation that Colombia has had in the last 30 years. So perhaps, uh, yes, in, in people's mind, uh, still it may have a bad reputation, but I have to say that Colombia has been transforming uh, to a positive way. Uh, it is doing everything uh, from the peace process to, to all these um, great um, innovations uh, to bring tourists uh, back to the country and to open the country. So, so definitely we keep an eye on the FCO advice, uh, that is for sure. And we will, as Mary said, we will never send you to, to a place that you might be at risk, but if that's the case, but, but no, I, it, uh, it's up and running. So <laughs> great place and great time to, to go, definitely. <laughs> I can you. completely confirm what Lena and Mary just said. So I've been living here for four years now or so, and I have never felt insecure in nowhere. <laughs> and I've been to quite a few places in Colombia. <laughs> that, that's really reassuring. Thank you, Lena. Uh, we've also had a, a, a question on uh, altitude sickness. I, I know, Lena, you mentioned about Bogota being at a slightly raised above sea level, but um, do, is mm -hmm. altitude sickness a problem like what you may have in, in Peru or Bolivia? Uh, no, definitely uh, not as bad as Peru, Bolivia, when you are at 4,000 meters. Um, Bogota is 2,600, so you're going to feel a little bit of headache or something when, when you arrive to, to the country, you land in Bogota, uh, definitely. So the first few days, I always recommend just to, to keep it, to, just to stay um, less active, let's say. Uh, but if you are afraid of altitude, you don't have to go to Bogota at all. You can fly to Cali, as I mentioned. Um, and, and then you can start sea level. Then you go to the coffee region. Remember the coffee region is uh, 1400 meters. So uh, slowly, slowly you get uh, to altitude. And at the end of the holiday, you can visit Bogota for sure. So that will be perhaps the highest place on your trip. Very sensible advice, Lena, thank you. Uh, we also had a question about Zipaquira, the Salt Cathedral that you were mentioning just outside of Bogota. Uh, the beautiful um, salt cathedral that's built 200 meters below the, the ground. Um, someone's asking us about a train that travels, um, can you travel by train between Zipaquira and Bogota? Do you know if there's a train operating? Only during the weekends, but I'm assuming you probably have more information. I think it's just that it's a local train as far as I know. Um, we don't sell it. Lina, I think you have more information about that. It's, it's called the Tren de la Sabana. Sabana is a kind of flat land, which is the, the land around Bogota. Um, even though it's high, it's still flat. Uh, 
Um, but uh, it's, it's mainly a train that locals tend to take during the weekend to spend the day, like uh, going with a family on a Sunday, um, just as we go outside London <laughs> or something like that. Um, so, so that it, it might be a little bit crowded with families. That's the only thing to consider. But it's something that we can look into if, if somebody is interested in taking it. But it's only weekend. Okay, great. Thank you, Lina. Um, can you also tell us a little bit about the Museo Botero in Medellin? Oh, uh, my, my maiden <laughs> some name is Botero, so, <laughs> so definitely I know are you related <laughs> by Are you related by any chance? Few, few <laughs> generations back. <laughs> um, but I'm not uh, one of his models, uh, thank God. Uh, no, definitely. There are two Botero museums. One is the, the painting, uh, the one where you have more paintings uh, of Botero, and that is in Bogotá. So that is a, a great collection of, of paintings that you can see. But the sculptures um, are in Medellín. So, so it's, a, it's a park outside the, um, uh, the Museo de Antioquia. Uh, that you can, you see all the, the, the different sculptures. Basically, uh, Fernando Botero is famous for the big ladies or the big people, let's say. So, so you see all these beautiful sculptures uh, in Bogota, uh, I don't know, in Medellin and the paintings in Bogota. Fantastic. Okay, well, I'm not sure. I don't think, I think that wraps everything up now. Uh, I can't see. We did have a question about distances. Sorry, Laura. Um, I think originally we had a question about distances. Um, yes, you're right. You're right, Mary. Yep. We, yeah, the it's... distances look enormous. What is the best way to get around? Hire a car? Perhaps you would like to um, give us an insight on that, on that. It's an enormous country, so you do want to fly mostly. Um, as Lina said, because it's also divided by three different mountain ranges, you just don't want to, you, you know, it looks very near, but it's actually pretty far away. So there's something that you need to keep in mind. I did a self-drive trip around the coffee region when we were just investigating the option, and it's a fantastic way of, of doing so. So if you, um, if you are an adventurous driver, you're happy, with, you're happy to do that and you're happy to tackle mountains, I thoroughly recommend doing a self-drive in the coffee region um, and perhaps venturing a little bit further, perhaps from Bogota, perhaps doing just a, a loop going, you know, starting Bogota, going round and then back again. That's great. Thank it you. would explore the whole country by land because it is too long. Mm -hmm. I, I would like to, to mention that I had a, a client who did not like flying in, um, in anywhere. So I, I used to arrange all his um, holidays in Colombia or, or everywhere in Latin America. And Colombia, one of, those, one of those countries, he just wanted to see the whole country of land. So he traveled, he did about two or three different holidays. And, and I kind of, first I took him to the south, then to the east and then to the northwest uh, or the northeast. So it is possible to see the whole country of land. You just have to spend a long time um, on it. But the flights are just easy and very convenient just to cross the mountains if you don't want to, to spend a long time in a car. And, and driving around is also um, really worth the views. It's like going up and down those mountain chains, you gain some views that you don't get from, from above, I feel so. And there is many of little towns that have nice boutique hotels mostly. So for example, going from Bogota to the coffee region by rental car, quite a nice drive and you can stop in the Magdalena Valley, for example, in Onda and spend one or two nights there. So I feel like rental car is a good option, but yeah, you, you won't be able to explore the entire country by car if you don't have like a year to travel around. So. <laughs> Well, that's fantastic. Thank you so much, Lena and Mary and Lena. Uh, it was a really beautiful presentation and really appreciate you joining us, Lena, from Santa Marta. Um, so thank you so much for taking the time out. I hope everybody at home has enjoyed their whistle stop tour of Colombia. And we look forward to welcoming you at the next virtual travel club, which will be hosted on the 11th of May and we'll be focusing on Mexico. So um, uh, another fascinating country. Um, for us to be talking to you about um, and lots of great food as well. Um, so thank you so much, everybody, this evening. Um, we really hope you've enjoyed 
the event and we look forward to welcoming you again soon.